counseling, uh, and folks that I, I meet on the street often don't have the same narrative as those maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, the presumption that people were at least formed in some way uh, with the Christian story, with the, the biblical background, uh, with the experience of their parents taking them to church, uh, just isn't so. Uh, and I've also encountered couples where that's a particular topic that we talk about during pre-marriage counseling. Uh, where the church has meant a tremendous amount to, uh, to one person and uh, something they couldn't imagine uh, starting a family and raising a family without. Uh, and it's something uh, either just totally absent or even suspicious uh, they look upon from the other side. And I've uh, been in contact with friends who, uh, who say, you know, my, my spouse is a wonderful person, uh, maybe a better person than me, but, <coughs> but I can't get them to come to church. I can't figure out how to explain to them why they should. Uh, all I know is that it's important to me. And I can only respond to that with my own personal food. Uh, but then there's people outside of the church who, uh, who kind of want to focus on, well, what does the church think about those who don't come to church regularly, those who don't come to church at all? Uh, and again, I go back to the same thing. I can only tell you uh, what my story is and, and what the church, uh, and beyond the church, what, uh, what Christ means to me. I need the church. I need the recalibration. I need the story of Jesus. And I'm finding more and more so that I need more than just the story of Jesus. I need that cosmic Christ, that force in the universe uh, that not only reminds me when I've, uh, I, I've stepped beyond, uh, but that is constantly calling me back. Uh, that is constantly affirming that this world was created with particular purpose uh, and was created by uh, the one who is loved. Uh, who is always in the work of healing, redeeming, and loving. Uh, but we're left to my own devices. Uh, ben isn't the worst human being you've ever met. Uh, depending on who you've met. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but boy, I need help. I was reminded that a week ago uh, after church, and usually after church is one of my more fatigued times uh, during the week. And <clears throat> this afternoon, while well, Hannah was trying to get a, a, an important deadline met at work, uh, we had children, uh, some of them my own, some others uh, working around the house, and I was uh, under their care, and I got a, uh, I was there, okay, they were on the money. That's how much somebody I'm going to get So I get a phone call uh, from somebody uh, who clearly is, is, uh, is, is in need. Uh, his wife is in the hospital uh, and having the, the, what would be the multiple surgeries uh, uh, in hopes of, of, of solving her, her medical issues. Uh, she, uh, his family is there at the hospital with him. Uh, all of the bills have mounted, uh, having to take off work, and everything's been turned upside down. Uh, and he's without food, and he's without gas to get back and forth from, uh, from the hospital. <coughs> and so he asks if there's anything I can do. And I uh, tell Anna I'll be back in 20 minutes. I promise 20 minutes. I get in the car. I start, start the food line. I go from food line to get a gift card uh, to the, the sheet station. Uh, not that she's the other one. Uh, the, the <laughs> all the all I get a ball ball card. I get back and I, I, I call him. We're going to be back at the church. But I realize he's in the hospital. I might as well be in there. So uh, he says, great. And he tells me where he is. Uh, he's close to the emergency room. And so I go and I said, I'll be right outside. I've got 20 minutes. You know, uh, I've got my card. I'm there with the windows open looking for somebody. <laughs> Yeah, you have 
separated from his maker, uh, the last maker before God in heaven, and he just looks at these people who are filled with anger and begs them in those moments where it hurts to talk. Uh, of course, it hurts me to talk. Uh, with uh, the association of taking place on the cross, and he says, Father, please forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And then this criminal who's been rightly uh, accused on either side says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Every way of rest is towards grace and goodness and healing and reconciliation. That is what I need at my life. As I think about this gospel and I think about Christ that keeps Sunday, uh, I was. Uh, Reminded of a story that Barbara Brown Taylor, uh, the great preacher from, uh, from the, the deep south of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, talked about. She said she always, if you're driving down the interstate in the south, you see those three crosses uh, just about all over the place. And she sort of said, this seems like a waste uh, of, of materials. One cross gets a point across, that's fine. Why three crosses? And she said there was a few people, more people in their own town who were building the three crosses. And she realized how much went into it. She watched the painting the crosses and all the work that they were doing to get these uh, three crosses up. Sunday the fact that we need a compass, a king that lives in our lives. But I don't think that the paradise uh, that, that Jesus promises is the only kingdom uh, that we're seeking. I think that part of understanding 
in the story of Jesus is understanding that we are part of that kingdom already. That everything that was made, every person that was made, was made by and through that word. And it's so fully loved. It is so fully uh, an agent of healing. But the nature of Jesus in the story that we just heard is the force that created all the things. And is at work in the world now. The last part of my sermon. Uh, I <clears throat> had made a promise after we had the uh, a 1789 service, uh, Eucharistic service, uh, when somebody uh, came up and asked me afterwards, said, wouldn't morning prayer have been the primary worship that they would have uh, they would have used during that time 200 years ago? And I had to say, yes, absolutely. Uh, I said, well, why can't we do morning prayer? Uh, and I get several requests uh, to do morning prayer, and uh, the church is in a different place, and there's a, a significant story about why morning prayer, uh, uh, and many reasons why morning prayer was the usual offering. Uh, but I said I would, and I looked through them with all the baptisms, and the Celtic service, and, uh, and, and different, and all Saints Day. Uh, this was the only, and then Advent coming, this was the only Sunday that worked. Uh, and as I started getting close to knowing that Christ was on Sunday, I thought, uh, it seems horribly, uh, seems horribly odd that we wouldn't gather uh, and receive Christ's body and blood on this Christ on Sunday. Uh, but I said, we come up and come up being a sacramental church. We relegate the sacramental to an episode. We come and we receive Christ's body and blood.